continue reading the Holy Gospel according to St. John with the explanation by Blessed Philip. Chapter 5, verses 22 through 24. Glory to your Father and the Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, so that all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He that honors not the Son, honors not the Father who hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth in him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Explanation By his many miracles, Christ has already showed the Jews his power as a benefactor. But this was not enough to convince them to give him the honor that he is, that is his due. Therefore, he now states, The Father hath committed all judgment unto the Son. So now states the Father, Um, now states the Father have committed all judgment unto the Son, so that at least they would honor him out of fear of judgment. Generally, threat of punishment is more effective than kindness in teaching us men, especially the more foolish among us, to do our duty. The Father have committed all judgment unto the Son. This means that the Father began the Son as judge. Likewise, the words, so have, the Father given to the Son to have life in Himself, mean that the Father begat the Son as an internally living being, because the Father is the cause of the Son's existence. We say that the Son has received all that He has from the Father. He possesses these things by His very nature as Son. Therefore, although He is from the Father, the Son possesses judgment in the same way that the Father possesses judgment. But the Father is not the cause of the Son, in the same way that He is the cause of created things. To hold this would be to diminish the honor of the Son. Christ affirms here, Christ affirms there is no difference in the honor due to the Father or the Son. All men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father, He says. For if the Son has the authority to punish or reward as He wills, then he has the same power as the Father. Therefore, we must honor him exactly as we honor the Father. This saying of the Christ is a rebuke to the Arians. If they imagine they honor the Son as a mere creature, the Lord's words compel them to honor the Father as a creature as well. Truly, the man who honors not the Son honors not the Father. When someone claims that the Son is a creature superior to all others and thinks that he pleases the Son which, with, such false, with such false and empty honor, that man in fact dishonors the Father who sent the Son. He that honors not the Son, in the same manner as the Father honors not the Father. To the Lord, to this Lord, to this the Lord as the words who would send him so that the Jews would not be enriched, as we have said above. In his wondrous manner of teaching, the Lord interweaves exalted statements about his divinity with humbled expression of the truth in order to soften the rage of his enemies, the Jews. Even after Christ's resurrection from the dead, his ascension into the heaven and the manifestation of his power through the apostles at Pentecost, the heretics Arius and Anamomus, Anamius still said that not his glory and sought to reduce him to the status of a created being. So when the Jews see him now in human flesh, before accomplishing these mighty deeds, eating and drinking with publicans and harlots like one of the crowd, Imagine to what a rage they would have been driven had he continuously spoken of himself in exalted terms. Again, this is why he adds, He that hears my word and believes in him that sent me have everlasting life. The Lord reassures them that by hearing to his words they would show their faith in God. Glory to your Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.